In the Bible, the plan for uh, the local church, how is it to be run? How is it to be managed? Who is in charge? What are they supposed to do? How is it supposed to function? We can turn to Acts the 20th chapter, and in the uh, 17th verse we see that Paul is on his way to Jerusalem, and he stops at Miletus, and nearby in Ephesus there's a church that he's had a lot of impact upon, and he calls for the elders of the church to come to him. He wants to have a meeting with them. And so he gives them instructions on how to care for the church because Paul's not there now, you see? Timothy is not there now. Who's there? Ha, it's the elders. He calls for the elders. They are the ones that's going to take care of this church. And in verse 28, he gives them specific instruction that the Holy Spirit is telling them what to do. He says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. Who is it? The elders. And who said so? The Holy Ghost hath made them overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. So the Bible plan is that the elders take care of the local church. This allows those special servants of God that have been specially set apart that receive the tithe to go places where the elders can't go. The elders have to work there. That's their job. That's why they take care of the local church. That's why they're not sent off way out someplace where there's no church. You know, if you're paid the tithe, you can go way out there because you don't have to have a local job here, right? Of course. Okay. And 1 Peter tells us the same thing. 1 Peter 5, he's talking to elders. Verse 2, feed the flock of God, taking oversight. Same story. But then over in Ephesians 4, we have this question about the pastors. Ephesians 4, verse 11 and 12, and he gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of ministering, for the building up of the body of Christ. Who are those pastors? People ask me that question, they think they're going to trick me on it. But truthfully, friends, the word pastor's there, and that's only found one time in the New Testament, by the way. One, and this is it. The word is poimen. It simply means a herdsman, and it means the overseers over Christian assemblies. Paul has already stated that this is to be the elders. Therefore, the elders are to shepherd the church, to take care of the church, to take oversight over the church, to be the pastors of the church. Now, where in the world has this, uh, do, do we find an excellent example of this? In Western Kenya, uh, going back uh, before 2002, just before, uh, from 2001 and backwards, the eight-year average for baptisms uh, the annual average for baptisms, eight-year average per year, was 3,400 per year in the Western Kenya field. Uh, you might think of it, for those of you who are um, uh, in conferences, like a conference. Uh, so 3,400 baptisms per year. They had 1,000 churches. They had 100 pastoral staff, 100 ministers. But in Western Kenya, as in many places uh, where the countries are not as rich, about 80% of these pastors did not have bachelor's degrees. They had two years of uh, formal training and about a year of internship. And the union there, uh, the union conference wanted to develop a program in conjunction with Barriton University. It it's, uh, goes by a different name now, but at that time it was called Barriton College, Barriton University. They wanted to put together a program so that the employed pastors who did not have a degree would have an opportunity to get a degree with some help and assistance from the union financially and so forth. So here was the plan. Twice a year they would allow the pastors to leave their districts of 10 churches apiece, 1,000 churches, 100 pastors, 10 churches apiece. Allow them to leave two months in the spring, three months in the fall, go to the university, stay in the dormitories, and uh, take intensive classes. And after five years, they would be granted a degree. So they're gone roughly five months out of the year. They're only back in their districts for three or four months at a time, twice a year. And if you have 10 churches, how much are you gonna accomplish in three or four months? Not much, right? Not much. So the question is, what happened to the baptisms when the pastors just up and left? They just went off. Okay, and uh, 
you know, what, what happened? Well, it was interesting. You remember I said that it would, the eight-year average was 3,400 a year for the 1,000 churches? Well, about 40 pastors, about 40% of the total, decided to go ahead and get a degree. So this means 40 out of the 100 are no longer in their districts full-time. They're gone about half of the year. So what happened in the churches? Did they fall apart? Don't think so. The first year that the pastors were away at school, roughly half of the year, 2002, the baptisms shot up to a little over 4,200. That's an 800 person increase. That's a pretty good bit of souls for no pastors. And that's with only 40% of the men gone. The second year, again, it was slightly under 4,200, but the third year, the baptism rate went to 8,200 plus. And the fourth year, it was 9,346 baptisms and professions of faith with only 40% of the men gone. Think what would have happened if 100% of them had left. It worked. Why did it work? Because when the pastors are gone and the people know that they're going to be away, guess what? They say, you know what? If the pastor's not here, this means we're going to have to do it. We're going to have to preach. We're going to have to evangelize. We're going to have to church plant. So now these churches, which are averaging 100 members apiece, guess what? Now you have 100 ministers. Okay? Ellen White tells us in Evangelism, page 382, page 382, write this down, Evangelism 382. If the ministers would get out of the way, if they would go forth into new fields, the members would be obliged to bear responsibilities and their capabilities would increase by use. Friends, if we want to go home to be with Jesus, God has a plan. We need to follow it.